Grade 12 IEBIT Module 3.2 Computer Crimes and Criminals. So today we're going to talk about all the different kinds of computer criminals and how to protect your computer. So any, a computer criminal is anyone who uses IT or ICT to commit a crime and there are many types of criminals, hackers, crackers, virus authors, cyber gangs and spammers. So a hacker, there are three types of hackers um, ranging from the really bad ones to those who are actually trying to help people. So what they do, they use their IT skills or ICT skills to access computer systems and networks and information, but they do it illegally through a backdoor. They find some weakness in the system to exploit the system. Although some of them are just curious and they're trying to see how clever they are, the, the good white hat hackers are the good hackers and often they're trying to protect a company or do some form of good by hacking. The bad hackers are the black hat hackers and when they hack into a system they are trying to do something malicious. Um, but even the white hat hackers are actually committing a crime. Crackers, this is no longer a, t a term that is actually in use, but they, they commit illegal activities like breaking passwords or gaining illegal access to systems and they intend to do harm. For example, they'll steal or change data or corrupt data. A virus author, there's a picture on the right here of one that was wanted by the FBI and these people write code so that the computer gets a virus and or some other malware and they're very clever because they um, can do a lot of harm this way. Um, so it can be as an intellectual exercise or it can be to really do harm. A cyber gang is a whole group of people and they work together to commit some form of cyber crime. They may never even have met and they're just working together through the internet and um, the cybercrime is facilitated by their cooperation with each other. So the gang members often each have a speciality. For example, the one might be good at writing code, the other one at selling data, and another one creating fake websites. And a large portion of um, computer crime is actually committed by these gangs. A spammer is somebody who sends out emails that you did not ask for. Usually they're adverts and they send them to as many people as possible. They find the email addresses from online databases or by trawling websites. And the spam could be just annoying, but they may be trying to spread malware as well. And more countries these days are, are starting to classify spamming as an actual crime. The spam clogs, clogs up the internet so that the internet cannot be used for useful things that people want and it wastes a lot of time as well as people have to delete all the emails or go through all the emails that they received unnecessarily to find the useful ones. Um, theft is another huge part of cybercrime. There may be people just stealing the computer equipment physically. For example, mobile devices have become very easy to steal because they're so small. Um, or they may be um, stealing access to data on the equipment. Um, stealing intellectual property is also a form of cybercrime. Online or digital piracy means that you make digital copies of music, movies or books for your personal use or even for reselling and that is a form of theft. Um, stealing identity, identities is also a form of cybercrime. And this is when somebody steals your details and somehow find all your details on the internet and then they pretend to be you and go and buy stuff in your name, which they then take for themselves. And using ICT, a thief can get hold of your ID data from the internet. Um, you may not realize that it's been taken because no physical document has been stolen, but next thing you'll see money coming off your, off your account and you wonder how that happened. So in internet related fraud, somebody is lying to someone to get something. They'll maybe get your credit card details and use them. 
or you will see a website which um, tells you that there's a charity and then you, you um, give a donation but they keep the money for themselves or else you'll make a purchase online but you never get the items um, or you see there's an amazing business investment website they'll take your money and, and your name and then they disappear and you never get what you paid for um, or somebody may buy a car with credit obtained in your name and these types of work from home and make millions um, promises are usually some type of pyramid scheme. So usually when something is too good to be true that you find on the internet, it usually is too good to be true, so don't trust it. The theft of money is another thing that um, criminals get up to. It could be direct where the programmers are very clever and they're working for a bank and there have been stories of people who trans the programmer transferred 0 0.0001 cent from every transaction into their account and nobody noticed because there, that small amount of cents is unnoticeable on a transaction but in the end that person accumulated a lot of money into their own account um, fraud can also be performed, um, for example, at an ATM. They, in, they put a skimmer into the card reader and it reads all the card details. Or they put a camera and the camera records your PIN as you are typing it in. That's why you always need to be very careful at ATM machines. The theft of data or espionage um, is when data is copied onto removable media or through a network using rootkits, viruses, spyware, or other malware. And it's usually done through a backdoor, which is um, a, a sort of flaw in the system that exists and the person found a way into the system through the backdoor. So reasons for stealing data, they may want to sell it to advertisers, or they may want to use it for themselves. They may want to blackmail someone because they've found out some dirty secret of the person. Or they may want to cover up something by destroying the data. Or they may have some other malicious reasons. The theft of resources. They, people may steal computing power or network bandwidth. Um, we'll talk about that on the next slide. Piggybacking is when your neighbor uses your internet connection without paying for it. They figure out what your password is, or you may have an old password or a bad password policy, like you just put your name as the password and they guess it. And then um, there's also software that can scroll through all the possibilities for password and they eventually find your password and um, they, they climb onto your Wi-Fi. Um, network related Criminal activity will lead back to the IP address of the owner of the network. So when you steal computing power or net network bandwidth, um, there are some people who set up a botnet. So a botnet is when a whole network gets infected and all the, the computers on the, co on the network become remotely controlled. So somebody outside on the internet has found a way into the network and is controlling them. They use malware to get control and they control the remotes, the PCs remotely. They install their own software and then they run their software on the, the computers. There are all sorts of reasons why they need, may need more processing power, um, but they're getting free processing power this way. And the criminals spread malware they commit fraud, they launch DDoS network attacks, we'll talk about that in another slide, and they send spam. These are all the possibilities of why they want to use your computers or your network and create a botnet. A zombie PC is similar, but it's only one computer, which is then infected and remotely controlled. So a DDoS stands for Distributed Denial of Service. It's when a website becomes unavailable. And that is caused when 
thousands or millions of computers all request data from one site at the same time. So there's lots of traffic going to that web server. And the web server is so busy dealing with all the traffic that it can't cope. And then the website becomes unavailable. This is called a DDoS. Another form of, we're not sure if you call it a crime, but abuse and extortion, which the internet is used for, is cyberbullying. So they use the, the, the internet to malign or mock or embarrass or threaten or intimidate a person. It can be done through instant messaging like WhatsApp or SMS or email, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. All of the social networking sites are um, places where this happens. It can be worse than real life bullying because it's not visible in the outside world and yet there's that written message which stays and cannot be erased and that um, causes a lot of harm. Also the person is very difficult to track down often. They can be hiding behind a pseudonym and make themselves difficult to trace. And there are laws against cyberbullying but I think these things are evolving all the time. Cyber extortion is IT-based blackmail. Um, the threats are that a whole website can be taken down. They will threaten that. Or that damaging information could be revealed. Or that some form of electronic communication is going to be sent out to damage someone's reputation. Or they may have unflattering photoshopped photos, which they threaten to make public. Um, so the effects of cybercrime. Individually, people may spend more on their cybersecurity because of the fear of being cyberbullied. Um, it will decrease productivity because somebody's been upset. It will increase social stratification because people are wary of those in different social classes. So it causes division, it causes hate, and there's a culture of fear and suspicion in the business world. There's a loss of revenue because of the need to protect from cybercrime and there are damaged reputations.